Hey, welcome to the Bourbon Burner series. Uh, we have a good one today. I know I'm calling these holiday meals, not necessarily in all parts of the world, but I know uh, in the winter time, um, we like to make etouffee. A little bit spicy, get a little spice kick to it, have, have a good warm, uh, you know, gravy base to that. And in the winter, we mostly make it with shrimp. Uh, crawfish season, of course, I do uh, make things with crawfish and I do crawfish bowls and things like that. But the crawfish season is anywhere from late February to, uh, you know, February, March, April, you know, somewhere along in there. It just depends on on the weather conditions and, and the temp water temps and things like that. But uh, off season shrimp, but hey, it's comfort food and let's get right to it. Hey, welcome back to the Bourbon Bounty Kitchen. Uh, today we're making, cr uh, not crawfish, shrimp etouffee. And you may ask, is this really a holiday recipe? Well, in uh, Louisiana, they make etouffee all year round, and the only difference is this is not crawfish season. Uh, crawfish season is, uh, you know, February, March, April, uh, up in that time frame. So we're going to use shrimp, and actually, I had to use Argentinian shrimp. So, uh, but. Anyway, uh, what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna make a stock. So let me turn this burner on because I have some water in this pot. And what I've done is I've taken uh, uh, last, uh, you know, but ahead of time and I prepped and I peeled my shrimp and I've saved the shells. Uh, my shrimp are, are tucked away in the fridge right now because they come way later in this process. But what we're gonna do to this stock pot is we're gonna add um, our shrimp shells. And this is gonna make a shrimp base. Now we're only gonna use, I put about four cups of water uh, in this pot. We're only gonna use about a cup, maybe a cup and a half uh, when we go to make the etouffee. If you want, you can save it uh, and it'll keep up to a week in the fridge or about three months frozen. Uh, you know, if you wanna plan on making something else uh, with the rest of the remaining stock, but it's really not much to it. We're gonna get our shrimp shells in there. All right. Get, get my slotted spoon here and we can stir these down in there. Now to this, I am gonna add, what I did was I took a half of about a medium onion uh, and a, uh, maybe one and one and a half celery stalks, depends on how big it is, and the cap and base of my bell pepper. So that's go also gonna go in here. You can leave these in big chunks because we're gonna strain this off, okay? This is not, you don't want finely chopped things going into your stock. To this also, I have a clove of garlic that I just kind of uh, crushed on the side with the knife a little bit, peeled it and just cut it into three pieces. You can just cut it in half. Just expose the oils where they can come out. Uh, to this also, we are going to add two bay leaves. I'm gonna get this stirred kind of around in here. We're also gonna bring this up to a boil and then we're gonna reduce the heat and simmer and once this gets going, I'm gonna simmer it for 45 minutes covered because I don't wanna lose any of my moisture uh, out of my stock. I just want all of those flavors to come out in there. This is an important part of making a really good etouffee. If you don't make your own stock, you're at the mercy of, uh, you know, preservatives and things like that. If you buy like, a, you know, already made uh, shrimp stock or seafood stock or something like that, and you never know what kind of flavors you're gonna get. At least here, you know you're gonna get the flavor of the shrimp that you're gonna use, or crawfish, if, if you're in the right time of season, that you're gonna use in your actual etouffee. So we're gonna um, let this uh, steep. This is all there is to it. You just let this, uh, once it comes to a boil, reduce it down to a simmer, cover it for 45 minutes, and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, our stock has been going now for about 45 minutes. Uh, grab a little hot pad out of here or a hand pad. So I 
get this hot lid off here. What I have here is a mixing bowl with a, uh, a small mesh wire sieve in it. And we are going to now, oh, that looks really, really good. It smells incredible in here right now. Now this water is gonna be pretty clear, a little uh, tint to it. Don't worry about that. It, when you, if you do this with crawfish, it'll look a little muddier. Uh, but uh, yeah, don't worry about that a bit. Now we'll set this to the side. And then what I'll do is take this out. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. All right, what I've done is uh, I took my sieve, I dumped all the stuff in the trash, got uh, most of the remnants back out of this pot. Now I've had this burner on really low over here. So what I'm gonna do is move this pot to the hot burner. Uh, this is the cast iron that we're gonna be doing most of the cooking in. And I'm gonna turn this temp up on this thing and let this thing heat up. But I'm also gonna put my original stock pot over here on the low, low burner. This is the lowest temp you have. And I'm gonna put the stock from the mixing bowl back in so we can keep it warm while we're cooking our other parts. It's a little hot, it's okay. All right, now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get some oil and butter in here, half stick, uh, and I'll get that now. All right, a little bit of olive oil. It doesn't take much, maybe a, a teaspoon, maybe a half teaspoon. Just make a little dot in the bottom of the pan. And what this does is prevents the milk fats and the butter from burning. So now I'm gonna take about a half a stick of butter and I'm gonna lay it right on that oil. And you can hear it starting to sizzle because I had my, my cast iron preheating. All right, my butter's just about melted all the way down. I know on the recipe I put an eighth of a cup. Uh, basically, it, this is art, not a science, just eyeball it. Uh, take a couple of good heaping teaspoons or tablespoons of flour, throw in there. Maybe about like that. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And then what I'm gonna do now is mix this flour into the butter and we're making a roux. Now you wanna make sure this is mixed up really well. No lumps, no clumps. Uh, get it all, uh, and it won't be, it'll still be a little runny. You don't want it a dry base here. You want it a little uh, moisture left in it. So if you put a little too much flour, you may wanna add a little more butter. But we're gonna brown this for a little while. Uh, and that's one thing about Cajun cooking, is they like to brown that roux. Uh, get that flour uh, toasty. All right, we're getting very close here. I have a very good brown uh, roux in the bottom of this pan. It's starting to, uh, I don't want it to burn. I just want it to get very brown. And then I'm gonna add my vegetables. All right, this is getting very brown. It's very smooth. Uh, what I have in here is chopped up uh, the onion, the bell pepper, celery, and, and one jalapeno. So I'm gonna add this to this dark roux mixture. And I'm gonna cook this about five minutes or so, stirring uh, constantly, pretty much. All right. All right, these have been going for about five minutes. I um, have my garlic here. Of course, I'm cheating again, but this is already minced up. Uh, but if one thing, if you don't learn anything else from these cooking videos, do not add your garlic with the other vegetables. Always wait. So I'm gonna put in clove or two here. 
maybe a tiny bit more. Art, not a science. And then I'm gonna go two more minutes on this. All right, we're at the part here where I'm gonna add the stock. I have about a cup, maybe a little more. Uh, I poured it from uh, my stock in, into here. You can see the color on it. Little uh, uh, greenish tint to it because of the bell pepper and everything. Um, but I'm gonna add this in slowly, stirring constantly. You want it to incorporate. It's gonna clump up on you right at first. But you wanna make a good, smooth, uh, consistent gravy out of this. And this is where we turn our roux into a gravy. All right. Just that in there. All right. That is looking really, really good. Make sure I don't need just a little bit more. You want it kind of thick, but not too thick. All right, I'm gonna add another about quarter cup to this. It's starting to congeal just a little. It's not where I want it to be. You want it about like syrup. It's looking good. May not even use this entire quarter cup. I've turned my, my temp down now to just simmer. This is looking very good. All right, I have this at the right consistency. I am now going to add my Cajun seasoning, uh, about a tablespoon. I'm gonna put a nice, good little heaping mound in my hand here and chunk that right in. And then I'll taste it. I'm also gonna add some smoked paprika about a half teaspoon or so, something like that of smoked paprika. Don't go overboard with it. Just a little, puts a little smoky kick in there. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. All right, now's the part where I get to taste it and see how much salt I need to add. So this is always the good fun part here. Mm. Oh, that is, that is right there. Wow. I'm actually gonna grab the regular salt because it, it does need some. Oh, that is beautiful. All right, we're gonna put a couple of good pinches of salt in there and see what that does to bring those flavors out even more. All right, got a, a clean spoon here. I'm gonna taste it again. See what I have, trying to just get the roux and not the veggies. Oh, spot on. Come bam. Got a little spice kick to it. Yummy. If you want a little more spice, Go ahead and throw you some cayenne pepper in there. But remember, uh, you can put hot sauce on this at the end. All right, guys, this is the simplest part. All you have to do now that you have this at the right consistency. Oh, and by the way, we'll add bourbon in just, just a little bit, but uh, I'll, I'll let you know when. But right now, what I'm gonna do is I, I have peeled and deveined these, the, 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 the shells I used to make the stock with. We're gonna go ahead and add these shrimp in. Uh, they're just pretty much just right out of the shell like this. I didn't chop them up. Uh, I like the big meaty chunks of shrimp to come through. All we're gonna do here is stir the shrimp in. And I have this other burner over here on low, on the lowest setting. Sh 
shrimp cooks very fast. So we're going to stir this in. Make sure those shrimp get all coated very well. All right, now we have the shrimp uh, in, we're gonna cover it. And I'm gonna move it over to this other burner on low. Right there. And I'm gonna make some rice. All right, rice is uh, stupid simple, really. I mean, it's uh, two cups of water, one cup of rice. Bring it up to a boil, cover it, lower, lower the heat down to a low simmer and let it go till it's done. Uh, when all the water cooks away and it's fluffy, it's done. Uh, so I'm gonna have the white rice, no seasoning in the rice at all. It's all in the etouffee. All right, I have another pot here and I am going to dish out part of this into this pot and add a little bourbon to it to see what that will do. So let me turn this burner on a low, maybe number two setting. Let that kind of come up to temp. I'm gonna have every burner hot on this stove, but my control is the main dish. Uh, and then I'm gonna put some over here and add bourbon. All right, I have some of the etouffee dished up over here. Uh, what I've chosen for this one is four, barrel, uh, four rows of single barrel because it, of its high rye. It has a 36% rye in the mash. Uh, really good uh, drink, uh, really good pour on its own. Uh, I am just going to take this uh, regular old table soup spoon, tablespoon, and I'm gonna put about little less than a, a tablespoon, I don't know if you can see that. And I'm gonna stir this in and then let it finish cooking these shrimp. Oh, that smells so good. I'm hoping this one's going to work out. If it does, I'll get brave enough to make a whole batch with it and I'll go ahead and add it uh, when I do uh, the roux. But I wanted to keep them separate. I'm also, one of my uh, sons is gonna eat this, so. Uh, he's gonna eat off the regular batch. All right, now once all this is done, the bourbon's cooked in, the shrimp are done, the rice is done, I'll meet you back in the studio. Well, I can tell you right now, if we were judging off of aroma alone, this is a hit already, both of them. Now, again, yellow plate, and I would have plated both of these on a contrast color. Uh, but you can see how I did like the ramekin, little thing of rice, put five shrimp around it, put the stuff around. I did both the same, but this, this is the bourbon. And I only did the different colors because no bourbon, bourbon, and I can remember which one's which. So let's try the control first. No rye bourbon, high rye bourbon. Get a little rice here. Mm. <laughs> wow, that is good. Mm. Now, I've made etouffee before. Just a ten of a spice kick to it. Not too bad. Shrimp are cooked perfectly, too. That really helps a lot. Some of this sauce up here. Now, let's try the bourbon. Mmm. Mmm. Oh yeah, wow. I think if I were doing a whole batch of it, I would put the bourbon in earlier. I did let it stew a little bit in there though. Um, but there's probably still some live bourbon in this sucker. Oh wow, that is deep, dark, and tasty right there. Mmm. Mm-hmm. And I think I did good using a high rye bourbon. That um, Four Roses single barrel with the 36% rye comes across very well over here, or over here, I mean, in the bourbon one. Uh, let's go ahead and get another taste of this. Had a little bit of camera trouble, uh, ran out of space on, on my camera, but we're gonna finish this thing. Mm. 
Mm. Man, that is so good. That little spice is kicked from that jalapeno. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bang on. Um, that's really, really good. But that is so much better. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. We have another hit on our hands. Recipes down below. But as always, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell down there for notifications, and I promise I'll keep making you these videos.